NBA is a make it or break it league. Whenever draft time comes, we get excited because there's always a crop of young, talented players coming into the league to prove themselves. Well, we all know that it sometimes doesn't work out. And starting from today, I've decided to look back at the draft history of the NBA. Hello everyone, I'm Purple Prince, and today I start a new video series titled The Biggest NBA Draft Busts by the Decades. And this time, let's go 50 plus years back to the top 10 draft busts of the 60s. Number 1. Tom Stith, the second pick of the 1961 NBA Draft. Tom Stith was a two-time All-American forward and center who brought St. Bonaventure University to national basketball prominence in the early 60s. At 6'5 and 210 pounds, Stith was a star for his college team. Stith averaged 27 points a game for his three college seasons, and St. Bonaventure was ranked number three nationally in his senior season. Stith left St. Bonaventure as the school's all-time leading scorer, ending his career with 2,052 points. Stith finished second in the nation in scoring falling only to Oscar Robertson in 1960, averaging 31.5 points per game, and next season, he finished third in scoring, averaging 29.6 points per game. In the 1961 NBA Draft, Tom Stith was taken number two by the New York Knicks. Unfortunately, only five weeks after he was drafted, Stith had a physical examination to determine why he had lost 15 pounds during his senior season in college. He was found to have pulmonary tuberculosis. Tom Stith spent several months in a sanitarium and made the New York Knicks team for the 1962-63 NBA season. Unfortunately, his NBA career only lasted 25 games. Stith played just 8.4 minutes per game and averaged 3.1 points and 1.6 rebounds. Health ultimately derailed his once promising basketball future and he can now be considered an NBA bust. Fortunately. He was able to live a pretty long life of 71 years, but his NBA career, considering he was the second pick, was a bust. Number 2. Wayne Yates, 5th pick in the 1961 NBA Draft A 6'8 center from North Little Rock High School started his college career at New Mexico State University in 1956. He would spend there two years before transferring to Memphis State University. Wayne Yates was a late bloomer. After averaging just 5.3 points and 4 rebounds in his junior year, he exploded as a senior, averaging 17.5 points and 14.4 rebounds. His efforts were noticed, and in the 1961 NBA Draft, Yates was drafted with the 5th overall pick by the Los Angeles Lakers. It didn't work out in the NBA though. Because of an injury, Yates played only in 37 games. And in those 37 games, he was backing then Los Angeles Lakers star center Rudy LaRusso. Yates ended up playing just 7.1 minutes per game, averaging 1.9 points and 2.5 rebounds. Lakers saw that it just won't work and traded Wayne Yates to the St. Louis Hawks. Yates decided not to report to the new team and signed with American Basketball League, where he was playing more. But the league folded and Yates never went back to the NBA. Instead, he focused on a coaching career, which spanned 16 years. Number 3. Tom Thacker, first territorial pick of the 1963 NBA Draft. 1963 NBA Draft was one of the worst if not the worst crop of players ever assembled. Besides Nate Thurmond and Gus Johnson, there was absolutely no player with star qualities. The majority of the draft didn't even make it to the NBA but none of them was more disappointing than the first territorial pick and the fifth overall of the 1963 NBA Draft, 6'2 guard forward Tom Thacker. Thacker really rose to prominence only in his senior season, when he averaged 15.8 points per game for University of Cincinnati. After that, he was drafted in the 1963 NBA Draft by the Cincinnati Royals. Although Thacker ended up participating in 153 games as the Cincinnati Royal, the key word here is participating, because that's pretty much all he did. He played only 9.2 minutes per game and averaged 2.9 points and 2.4 rebounds. Thacker didn't play for a year and then was signed by the Boston Celtics 1967-68 team. 
He spent 65 games with the Celtics, played 12 minutes per game, and ended up winning the NBA championship in the summer of 1969. After a year in Boston, Tom Thacker played three more years in the ABA, where he had a bigger role, but ultimately retired after seven professional seasons. Although his NBA career can be considered a bust, Tom Thacker is the only player to win an NCAA, NBA and ABA championships. Number 4. Art Heyman Number 1 pick of the 1963 NBA Draft a 6'5", 205-pound small forward slash shooting guard from Duke was one of the most covered athletes of that generation. In his junior year at Duke, Heyman averaged 25.3 points and more than 11 rebounds per game, and in his senior year, he was even better. For his whole college career, Heyman averaged 25.1 points per game, which was a school record at the time. After winning a bunch of awards in 1963, including Associated Press National Player of the Year Award and the Oscar Robertson Trophy, Art Heyman was selected as the first pick of the 1963 NBA Draft by the New York Knicks. In his NBA rookie season, Heyman was good, averaging 15.4 points per game and making the NBA All-Rookie Team. After that, it was a downward spiral. His temper and frequent outbursts got the best of him. His relationship with the coach got worse, his minutes went down, and in his second year, he was only averaging 5.7 points per game. He had short stints in Cincinnati and Philadelphia, but neither team saw the potential he once had. After a year without basketball, Art Heyman went to ABA, where he had a moderately successful career, averaging over 15 points and 6 rebounds. However, his NBA career averages of 10.3 points and 2.8 rebounds signal a bust. Number 5. Dave Shellhays the 10th pick of the 1966 NBA Draft. Dave Shellhays was a 6'3 natural small forward who had a great college career. In fact, as a senior, he averaged 32.5 points for the Purdue Boilermakers. He was named a consensus All-American, academic All-American, and received his third straight first team All-Big Ten selection in 1966. After all the accomplishments in college, he was drafted number 10 by the Chicago Bulls. In Chicago, Dave Shellhays was forced into an uncomfortable role right away. Since Chicago already had a big front line with all guys standing 6'5 and above, Shellhays was named the point guard for the team. But the problem there was that the Bulls already had a great point guard in Guy Rogers. Shellhays really didn't have a role on the Bulls team and ended up playing just 73 games in two seasons, averaging 7 minutes, 2.8 points and 1 rebound per game. After two unsuccessful seasons in Chicago, Dave Shellhays was drafted by the Phoenix Suns in the expansion draft, but didn't make the team. His professional basketball career was over. Fortunately, he was able to enjoy almost a 30-year career as a coach afterwards. Number 6. Sonny Dove, number 4 pick of the 1967 NBA Draft Lloyd Sonny Dove played three seasons for the St. John's University. Similar to a lot of guys on this list, he had a very good college career. He is one of the few players in the university basketball program's history to have more than 1,000 career points and 1,000 rebounds. And his number was retired right along with the numbers of Chris Mullen and Mark Jackson. Unlike the two basketball legends, Doe's NBA career was short and forgettable. Sony Doe was drafted by the Detroit Pistons and right away had no role on the team. At 6'7 and 200 pounds, he was playing power forward for the Pistons and did it very sparingly, about 7 minutes per game. In 57 NBA games, Sony averaged 3.1 points and 2 rebounds. After two seasons in the NBA, Doe went to the ABA to play for the New York Nets. There, he enjoyed a much more successful stint, playing three seasons and averaging 13.8 points and 7.4 rebounds. His pro career ended after he shattered his leg in a bicycle accident, and later, unfortunately, his life tragically ended at just 37 years of age, when he died from injuries he sustained in a taxi accident. Number 7. Charlie Paul, 7th pick of the 1968 NBA Draft Lucky, or in this case unlucky number 7 on this list, is Charlie Paul, a 6'8 power forward slash center also a college star at Northeastern Oklahoma University. 
he was selected as a first round pick for the new expansion team, the Milwaukee Bucks. In his rookie year, Charlie Polk played just 17 games, averaging 3 points and 4.6 rebounds. Since in 1968 Polk was also drafted by the Army, he sat out 1969-70 season due to military service. He never returned to the Bucks and was traded to the Cincinnati Royals, where he enjoyed his most successful season, with 68 games played and an averages of 9.2 points and 4.7 rebounds. The stint there was short as well. Before the start of the 1971-72 season, he was traded to the Chicago Bulls, where he spent only 7 games before being traded to the New York Knicks. 28 games in New York, and his basketball career was over. Just like that. The first official player of the Milwaukee Bucks turned out to be a bust. Number 8. Terry Driscoll. Fourth pick of the 1969 NBA Draft. The 1969 NBA Draft featured the all-time leading scorer in NBA history, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He was obviously taken with the first pick by the Milwaukee Bucks, and boy were they right. But this draft also featured three of the biggest NBA Draft busts of the 60s, starting with the pick number 4, Terry Driscoll. At 6 foot 7 inches tall, Terry Driscoll played the small forward position for Boston College. A member of the New England Basketball Hall of Fame and the MVP of the 1969 National Invitational Tournament couldn't adapt to the NBA. Before joining the NBA, Driscoll played one season in Italy with the Virtus Bologna team in Serie A championship. That didn't help his NBA career though. Even though decent with his 5.4 points and 5.8 rebounds per game, he never proved himself worthy of the 4th pick status. After only one year in Detroit, he went to the Baltimore Bullets. After only one year in Baltimore, he went to the Milwaukee Bucks, which was his longest stint on one team with 134 games. He tried his skills in the ABA as well, but never could earn himself a bigger role on the team. The label? He was an NBA bust. He did find his success across the ocean though, with the Virtus Bologna team, first as a player and then as a coach, winning two Italian championships. And he was also successful as an athletic director of William & Mary college teams and just recently retired from his position in 2017. Number 9. Larry Cannon, 5th pick of the 1969 NBA Draft. Right after Terry Driscoll, the Chicago Bulls drafted Larry Cannon, who somehow had an even more disappointing NBA career of just 19 games. Cannon was one of the better all-around players on La Salle's college, 1968-69 The thing with this 6'5 guard was that he wasn't just drafted by the NBA. He also was selected in the 1969 ABA draft by the Miami Floridians. He elected to play for the ABA and actually was very good, even averaging 26.6 points per game in his second season there. Cannon played a total of four seasons in the ABA before joining the Philadelphia 76ers squad for the 1973-74 season. In just 19 games, Cannon averaged 6.2 points and 2.7 assists. Not what everyone expected. By that time, Cannon already had developed a chronic medical condition called phlebitis in his legs, which ultimately forced him to retire from the game of basketball. And number 10. Bob Portman, the 7th pick of the 1969 NBA Draft. Bob Portman was one of those players who was also selected in the ABA Draft, but he was the one who decided that his basketball path goes through the NBA, not ABA. It's hard to tell which would have been the better choice at the time, but his NBA days were definitely not memorable. Drafted by the San Francisco Warriors, the 6'5 shooting guard played only 4 seasons for the franchise later known as the Golden State Warriors. A total of 221 games for the team with an average of 5.7 points and 3.3 rebounds. Far off the expectations of the former number 7 pick. And the expectations were definitely warranted. After all, he managed to score 1,876 total points in three years of college at Creighton University, in the time when NCAA didn't allow college freshmen to play on the varsity team. In all three seasons, Portman averaged a double-double with his individually best season being in his junior year, when he averaged 29.5 points and 15.4 rebounds. Gaudy numbers for someone who played only four seasons in the NBA. Thanks for watching guys, I probably missed some of your favorite busts so let's discuss them in the comments. 
What are your memories of the 60s in the NBA? Whatever your thought is, leave a comment below, like this video and subscribe for future NBA content. This was Purple Prince and I'm out. Thank you.